Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartitsa Lab and in this particular video we're going to look at boxing gloves. You think that's a pretty boring subject but actually the creation, shape, type and nature of a boxing glove has really influenced how people boxed historically and how people box today. So I want to take you through some of the eras and show you how they influence people's offence and defence in the art of boxing. Now the first glove in my collection I'm going to show you is this type here. Okay, So this is a relatively low paddy glove from the 1920s okay it's about four ounces so it's a competition an early competition glove what's quite cool is it's from a London Jewish boxing club which I thought was quite interesting um, they're laced up as you can see my hands a little bit big for this glove but it should do the business it's got a free thumb here relatively unpadded kind of palm section there the padding is evenly spread across the fingers and the knuckles, so it's not really loaded on the knuckles. In fact, you can feel the knuckles through. So obviously someone has really leathered someone's face or someone's bags with this. So this is an early type of boxing glove. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it, the second one on for you. So this will be the awkward bit in these videos as I fiddle down here. And please excuse the laces being out. I don't have an accomplice with me. So you are. So a traditional set of 1920s boxing gloves. Now the interesting thing about these is pretty much automatically you move to a more open-handed style of defense. Because it's a thinner, lighter glove, because I've got a freer, freer thumb, I can use open-handed parries. So you see a lot in the 1920s boxing and earlier, kind of a stop and a hit. So a parry and a hit, a parry and a hit, a parry and a hit. You know, you see lots of open-handed Kind of controlling movements i can parry a hand across and hit so again with these i've got good control over the opponent's limbs which is a good vestige of the earlier kind of london prize ring and earlier types of pugilism and bare knuckle boxing i have decent control over a human i can grapple relatively well with these two to four ounce gloves again when you hit with these you can get some really good knuckle penetration because the padding is very even it's not knuckle weighted which means that even in a couple of rounds, if this was a new glove, I could make sure that my knuckle line is very clear. So good knuckle control, understanding how your fist is used, is really important because the knuckles are somewhat exposed. So that's why you see in the earlier boxing, still lots of vertical fist shots because the knuckle is still somewhat vulnerable. The hand is still somewhat vulnerable. So we need to box basically like we're bare knuckles still. But again, you can land some really decent shots with these. They work really well. Yeah, but they're really good for open-handed parries, controls, grappling, manipulation, as well as striking. You, know, you get some really good, really good sense of power, penetration, control, but a bit like a modern MMA glove, I feel like I could grapple in these relatively well. I can defend somewhat strategically, lower blocks, scoops, parries. I can do all sorts of clinch control with these and still strike effectively. So gloves from the 1920s, very, very interesting. And you see the type of boxing at the time having lots of vestiges of bare knuckle boxing. So it's a great source to study from because we still got somewhat of a lineage of ex bare knuckle boxers now being coaches of modern Queensbury boxers. Very interesting stuff. I really love these gloves, got fascinating history to them. We move forward in time and we hit the 1940s and then we move on to this type of glove. So this type of glove here, this is an eight ounce glove. Although now over time it's a six ounce glove, originally it's an eight ounce glove, okay? It's straw padded, it's laced up, it's got a bit more of a cuff and the padding now is more towards the knuckle and less so along the entire length of the hand. It's a bigger, chunkier glove, it carries more space. 1920s glove, 1940s glove. See, both of these fit my hand comfortably. See how much power and bare knuckle alignment you need with a 1920s glove. Just 20 years later, we've got something like this. It's much harder to parry and control. I can still control because I have still got my free thumbs so I can still move a human, I can still move limbs and I can do open-handed stops, but it's a lot more awkward than it was with that two to four ounce 1920s glove. Okay, the straw filling's interesting. You know, it does mold to my fist a lot better than say a modern Cleto raised glove. So it does shape over time. So over the course of a fight, you will get lots of knuckle penetration compared to a foam glove or a modern rag glove. 
which is really interesting. The thumbs are still here, so things like fouls and controlling are still very, very possible. And I can still grip in a clinch, but now the thumb is much chunkier than my 1920s glove. So my control over the human is a lot more overhand, a lot more overarm clinching as opposed to underarm kind of grappling style control. Again, these hit beautifully. You know, they feel perfect on the wrist, on the knuckle. Obviously at this time, we're seeing boxing include a lot more hooks. We're seeing a lot of prevalence of American fighters who tend to fight a bit lower from a crouch. They tend to hit with bombs and swings and uppercuts, you know, things that European fighters didn't do that, very, that often. So again, these gloves are very, very conducive to people that hook to move, that are in crouching positions. You know, these gloves have good protection of my wrists, good overall padding, and I can throw bombs with these with quite the degree of safety. I wouldn't really fancy throwing hooks and big bombs over hands with those 1920s gloves because it's basically near enough a bare knuckle fist. With these, I feel comfortable enough to throw hooks and uppercuts. My thumbs are still loose. It's a bit harder to control a human, but still a very good significant glove. So you start to see transitional 40s, 50s boxing away from vertical fists and into horizontal fists away from straight kind of more scientific scientific boxing into hooks uppercuts rolling head movement you get a lot more of that as we move into the 40s 50s 60s we're seeing a more fluid type of boxing hurricane winds here okay we move our way to the 70s and 80s okay and this is our last vestiges of an old style glove okay so just getting these on amuse yourself Okay, so a 1970s glove here. 1970s glove, we've got three thumbs still. Our thumbs are still free to grab and control, but now there is a lot more padding on the thumb. It's a lot more rigid. The 40s glove, I could move the thumb a little bit. The 20s glove, it's basically like having my thumbs three. Here, it's very clunky. My fist is essentially locked into place, and it's quite hard to manipulate and open and close the glove. So again, there's a lot more solid fistic defense. So my fists are here, my parries are small and circular. My blocks are as so. You know, so I'm doing a lot less open-handed parrying. It's a little bit more difficult. There's a lot more padding to this. Again, so this is a 10 ounce glove. So 10 ounce glove here, again laced. Still not particularly long on the cuff. Uh, the fashion was still for a shorter cuff. Much chunkier thumb, obviously a lot more padding. I can now really go to town on this. So, we've, you know, anything up to kind of the early Tyson era, down to the kind of early Ali era, you know, I can still throw some powerful bombs. I can basically box in the same fashion as today. I've got a little bit more control over the grapple and manipulation, but in essence, this is kind of the last in a line of older style boxing gloves before we get to what we use today. So again, these gloves, they're big, they're chunky. I can rely on them to cover me in a bit more defensive format. In my 20s gloves, I need to defend myself. So I'm using forearm blocks, I'm using parries and controls. Same with the 40s gloves to some degree. With these gloves, these can protect me. I can hold these up to my face, hold them against my head. They keep me relatively safe because they're big and padded. So even if someone hits my fist into my face, it's no major drama. It's essentially more to a, yeah. Anyone that's been hit with a 10 ounce glove knows it bloody well hurts, but it hurts a lot more being hit by a two ounce glove. You know, there's a lot more pain and penetration. You, know, you can get more mass in a Meteor glove, but in terms of pain damage, lighter gloves, they really suck to get hit with. These, they can make you a bit lazy on the defense, especially when looking for boxing for self-defense because they cover a lot of territory. They allow me to cover my body and my head, and I can be a bit lazy because the shots will bounce off these and not cause too much injury. Again, power penetration, they're a bit spongier. We start to move to a more modern material inside the glove. So while they hit, my knuckles can't really come to the surface that much. And I start to hit more with the frontal part of the glove, as opposed to knuckle discipline, which I get in the earlier styles of glove. So again, these are more designed for hooks, uppercuts, big power bomb shots, but there's no need for knuckle discipline anymore. You can get some serious power off these, but you don't need to be as focused with your knuckles. And then we move all the way to today. And today, so this is an example of a, a competition glove. 
And this is where boxing gets very different. So, you know, we're looking in the past 20, 30 years. So, Velcro, and obviously there is Velcro in the past. Velcro is very, very, very common now. There is an attachment, so my thumb cannot move at all. I cannot manipulate or open my hands to any degree. You saw in the other three types of glove, I could open my hands to stop. I cannot do that anymore. I can only take shots here. I cannot wave to you in any way, okay? So it's a bit longer on the cuff now, so a bit more wrist security. The padding is very, very modern, very, very firm. I cannot grind my muscle into it. It's very fair, but it reduces the need for knuckle discipline because you can hit pretty much anywhere with this glove and it not hurt your hand so much, okay? So we've got a big solid block of leather and foam with my hand really locked in place. I don't need to think about how my wrist is positioned hugely. I don't need to think about my knuckle discipline hugely. I can just bludgeon away with these. Like the previous gloves from the 70s, 80s, they offer me decent defense, lazy man defense, because this is quite padding. So I can take shots here. And again, modern glove, it doesn't for me carry the same penetrative power. Things bounce off. These sound brilliant on bags and pads because the leather on leather and the stiffness of the material makes a really good crack. You get a good sonic crack to it. But if you think about causing pain and damage, the 1920s and 1940s gloves allowed for a lot deeper damaging impact, which I really, really like. So these are modern gloves. And for me, these represent almost the final, final decline in traditional boxing. I can't grapple with these. I can't do any open-handed parries. I can't do any manipulation. I can literally just box, which is great for the sport of boxing, but something to bear in mind if you're training in historical boxing. Think about the type of glove and how that directly impacts the types of punches that you naturally want to throw. As soon as you put on those 20s gloves, your hands are a lot more open. You're ready to parry. You feel when you hit the bag or with another person, you feel the need to keep your wrist right, to keep your knuckles right. With these, you know, within a certain degree of laxitude, you can be a little bit lazier because the technology of the glove does that job for you. So some really interesting insights. I love playing with all the different types of gloves. I'd encourage you to practice bare knuckle, lighter glove, medium glove, heavy glove, because they all have different ways to get your body used to the rigors and nature of boxing. And if you're a boxing historian or if you're into bar titsu or something like that, you can see why some of the techniques made sense then because of the types of glove they used, the type of rounds they had, the types of training that they had. So to put yourself in their shoes, try on those historical gloves. Really, really important and they look cool. Cheers.